Hey, this is Blake's Nature Live, and here we're looking at a papaya tree. This papaya actually grew through a one gallon container, and then I mounted it, and look at it now. One year, and look at all the little fruits it has. We got it near the greenhouse. Look how fast it's grown, just being mounded. I'm not saying you have to mound it, it just happened to be this way. But the mounding does seem to help with the uh, circulation and drainage, especially drainage in uh, some soil types like clay. So here you can see, here's a male flower. It's just a nothing but a male one. See how skinny it is? See the male pollen? And then you can see how fat this one is, that it's also it's got the female part in there and the male, like I talk about, bisexual. And then it just has the extra male flowers for better pollination chance. But it's a smart adapting what it does because it has more of a percentage of pollinating this flower. That's what I like about these. Easy to grow and you're bound to have lots of fruits. So this one's a, about a year, close to it. Let's go check out one that's about a year and a half. Overlooked some stuff we've been doing construction. Parents were doing a pool. So I have these papayas at my parents' place. And so is the little my little greenhouse. Oh, I meant to show you the long ends before I walk over and show you the big papaya tree. Look at the little long ends. This one needs to be planted. It's in a pot but screw through. But I want to mount it somewhere here because at my parents' place it's at least 7 to 10 degrees warmer because of the live oak and the perfect climate here. Look at that. Now this one was a volunteer so I didn't mound it. So I'm having to push soil back because the drip that comes from under the house pulls moisture out. It's, um, it's sort of rottening. A little bit on the side but I fixed it pushed all the soil back and it's doing better it never was affected but I caught it in time before it got root rot so I pushed stuff back and then I made a little trench into here to kind of push this this back um, I didn't have an option to pull this out like I'd want to it is what it is this just happened the way it did let's take a look up Wow, that's a beautiful sight. Look at all the little papayas. Now, I left these on here to kind of slow it down a little bit in case I ever have to cut it back. So we'll have different shoots that come out. But these are doing really good, man. All these different size. I didn't even pollinate these. More flowers. And this is how you identify a perfect papaya that you want. You want you a bisexual one. That way you don't have to work hard and try to find you a male flower and then pollinate the female. So you see the female flowers, they vary, vary in size. Some are big, some are small, and then you have males and, and they're in between. But yeah, I love coming out here looking at it. Just grabbing onto it, saying how thankful I am for it growing for me and how lucky it was I almost pulled it up and I said you know what I'm gonna leave it and then my parents started liking it after they tried the fruit the fruit was really good it's want to grow stuff for my my family so they'll be happy and healthy look at that and Marjorie my girlfriend she loves it she loves it to death you see the roots kind of bulging so with papaya roots you don't have to worry because they're it's not going to mess up your foundation. Literally, it's growing up to the wall and probably just bending over. And then it's trying to balance itself out so it doesn't flip. Oh, there's some more in the back, you can see. Well, that's a real skinny one. Some are really skinny. They're all different shapes. It's probably because how it got pollinated. I could just stand here for a while and just look at it. It's amazing what you can grow in a climate that gets like 
27, uh, sometimes 25, but here, luckily it's near the wall. So I'd say it probably only got in the upper 30s by the wall because it did, it did burn the leaves a little bit. But the main goal is keeping the trunk safe and the tip safe from burn back. Like I said, a tree back and you want to save the fruits. Hopefully these, a lot of these will be ready before the first frost. And they should be, we should have some in the next few months, or probably the next few weeks, some of these in here. We'll see how when they, they turn. I want to take some down to Marjorie's family, let them try a one grown up here. I've been wanting to show everybody again the papaya, show you how it's doing. Yeah, I can't wait to go swimming. They got a nice pool coming along. Look at that. Let's check it out. There it is. So don't tell me you can't grow something in a cooler climate. No matter where you at, you can have a greenhouse that's heated, grow it by the wall, protect it, put Christmas lights on it. You get you can get about 10 degrees to 15 degrees warmer in a spot. Look, we have tons of trees. There's a big old live oak. Makes it a lot warmer and also the spots on the lake, so any cold air goes down, doesn't sit around. Give you a little idea of all the little plants I got going. Been so busy lately. I don't have my tripod, I have just my hand. I'm sure you enjoyed my finger in the camera. Here's some of them coral bush making new flowers, and then here's some of its seed pods. Even got a seed grape growing. Different stuff growing. Some Ranga. Here's one of the Manonas that I got from Nicaragua. Look how big it's got. I think it's like mixed with a custard apple and something else. There's one of them bridal plants. Piece of beautiful flower on it. A lychee behind it pushing out. Here's my Angie mango growing. Mahogany beside it. Here's my Noni or Nuni. The yellow jackets love them. The pollen and the, I mean the nectar that comes out of it. But you see where the flower falls off? There's little holes. It looks like it still produces some type of nectar for insects to, to drink on. So they don't destroy the fruit. There it is. Super food right there, very healthy. And I hear it's pretty nasty. But you know what? I'll look past that. If it's good for me, I'm gonna eat it. Or I'm gonna juice it. Here's a leche. There's a tropical almond in there. A rosemary. Here's some grafted uh Bragdon avocado. I did a veneer graft on it. There's a jackfruit growing in the ground. There's a tamarind growing in the ground. Different types of figs. Here's one of these Thai long avocados. I mean, sorry, Thai long papaya that I got from Marjorie's friends down south. I need to plant it out. I planted a small one over there, but it's just starting to go. Here's one of them coconuts I got down south from Marjorie's family's backyard. It's doing good. Let's see over here. Here's some uh, different avocado types of Bracton. Here's uh, one of the long ones that I got from a scion wood from Marjorie's parents tree. Makes these really long avocados and I, I grafted it and look how great it's done. That's where I grafted it. Look how much it's grown. I need to take scion wood and make more of it. 
Carapita, peppers, and all the good stuff over here. Let's look in the greenhouse real quick. Before we go in the greenhouse, this is one of them Nicaraguan papayas. It had to fell over, so I had to stake it up. Coming back. And here's one of them long tie papayas. It like has a really long fruit on it. You can see how the leaves look very different compared to these. Look in the greenhouse. Watch out lizards. Sometimes the lizards get stuck. I don't want to hurt him. There he goes. Alright. Just kind of see what's going on. Jackfruit. The noisy fan. Need to fix it. There's another tamarind growing in. It grew through the pot. It's okay. It happens. No big issue. Here's some queen palms. Aren't they pretty? See the trunk of them. Here's some dwarf papaya that I need to plant out. I was hoping my pet frog was in here. He likes to chill. Got him a little place to swim at, but he's not. She, he's not here right now. There is my other coconut. It is a uh, yellow one. You can see by the trunk. It's real yellow. The other one's just a regular green one. These came from down south. So this is a jackfruit that I pulled over from the fruit and spice part. So you can kind of get an idea. Pulled it far over and then I'm letting these grow up and then I'll pull some of these back over this to the left. Here's a lime mandarin growing and here's a uh, chili congo that I actually grafted that I'm pretty proud of. I grafted onto another top of chili on my own top of another one that did make good fruit. So now this one will make better chilies. So there you go, you can graft peppers too. Here's a uh, like a mimbado or um, I've been butchering the name lately. I ain't gonna try to say it. They call it mimbado, mimbade, and well, let me not show you all the green stuff. I got this one growing in the ground. I want it to grow up and make some fruit. It's related to the star fruit. And what they call it? It's not bimbi, it's uh. Can't think of it right now. There's my sour sop. Had a little bit of sun damage when I took the top off. I took some uh, the cloth off on the top to bring more sunlight in. It's coming back. It's gonna be fun. There's a sour orange growing. Monsteria doing good. Here's some of them cinnamon apples. Cinnamon apples. It's in the sope family. It doesn't taste like cinnamon. I just caught that. Let's hurry. Look around. It's got different egg fruit and here's some chili congas I did a cutting off of. And there's different grafts that just made. Here's a day avocado that I just took. It's pushing out. I grafted. More sour sops. There you go. Another day I'll tell you step by step. I just want you to kind of see. I got it control some stuff in here here's a lacucci plant and it's related to this jackfruit here's a cassava they call it yucca you use the tuber to eat here's a bracton avocado look at the beautiful tint of the leaves i grafted this one on the rootstock see where I grafted it at. Here's one of them cold hardy avocados, the fantastic. We got it mounted. Hey, if you like this video, like, subscribe, and share. I would really appreciate it. I'll catch you later.